So what size fuel injector do I need to meet my goals? The answer is actually quite simple to calculate. Here we have the equation that you need to use in order to calculate what size fuel injector you need for your combo. So the injector size that you require is equal to a number called the brake specific fuel consumption multiplied by your horsepower goal and divided by 0.85 as a safety factor and also divided by the number of injectors in your system. So let's do a quick example. We'll use my Ford Fairmont station wagon that I'm putting a Vortec 4200 in. My goal for the car is to make around 850 crankshaft horsepower. I should mention that all of your horsepower goals should be in crankshaft horsepower because your drivetrain may or may not be as lossy as mine. Uh, in my case, I want to make 750 wheel, which is around 850 crankshaft. So for this particular combo, I want to run E85 and I'm going to have six injectors, one per cylinder. Also, because I'm running a turbo, that comes to a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.85. We'll discuss a little bit later on where that number comes from, but just trust me on that. So I want to make 850 horsepower. Then we need to divide by 0.85. That's a safety factor. Basically, you don't want to run your injectors flat out. Most injector manufacturers don't recommend that. We've done it on multiple occasions. It's never been a problem for us but it's always good to have a little bit of safety factor in anything that you calculate and then we need to divide by the number of injectors so this comes out to 142 pound injectors in my particular case I plan on running a set of snake eater performance 1500 cc injectors and that just so happens to be 142 pounds per hour at 43 and a half PSI. Now I plan to run 58 PSI as my base pressure, so they're actually going to be around 160 pounds per hour, so I should have plenty of overhead if I ever plan to turn up the boost and make some more power. Next we're going to discuss brake specific fuel consumption. Brake specific fuel consumption is a number that is used to basically calculate the amount of fuel needed to make a certain amount of horsepower. The units for brake specific fuel consumption are pounds per hour of fuel flow per horsepower. So brake specific fuel consumption varies quite a bit depending on what fuel type you're running and what power adder you're running. As you can see, depending on your power adder, it increases by quite a bit. And depending on what type of fuel you're running, it varies quite a bit as well. In the case of the example I explained earlier, we were in this category. I'm running E85 and a turbo. I always go with the higher of the two numbers. That being said, I'm the type of person that trusts but verifies. So I thought it would be cool to go through a couple of combos that we have seen on this channel and a few others and calculate the brake specific fuel consumption for that particular vehicle. I should mention that the examples that I've chosen are examples of cars that I am sure that it was not running out of fuel pump. This is because if your fuel pump is not able to flow and keep up with your injectors, you will see uh, pressure loss at the rail and your injectors won't flow as much and that can be a little hard to uh, factor in when you're calculating uh, the total mass flow of the injectors. All right, to start off, we're gonna start with my daily driver, which is a 2009 Chevy Cobalt with an Ecotech 2.2 liter. I thought this would be a fun example to throw in because it shows you what a factory vehicle is doing on the brake specific fuel consumption. Nice thing about the Cobalt is I can plot engine torque in the logger. From that, I'm able to calculate horsepower. 
the car is making 125 horsepower, 50 pounds per hour of fuel flow, and therefore has a brake specific fuel consumption of 0 0.403. This seemed a little low to me, just based on the fact that it's running gasoline, and I would have expected a 0.5 to 0.55, like what we saw on the chart, but it's an econo box. They probably are trying to make it consume as little fuel as possible, even when you're wide open throttle. All right, on to the next one. So the next one is an example that Matt Happel of Sloppy Mechanics provided to me, and that is his G35 when he had the 4.8 in it with no supercharger, so naturally aspirated. So it made 395 crankshaft horsepower. It was running 59% ethanol, 264 pounds per hour of fuel flow, and that all came out to a 0.66 brake specific fuel consumption. Next up is the Sloppy Mechanics G35, but when it had the LSA blower on it. It made 638 crankshaft horsepower, 71% ethanol, and 491 pounds per hour of fuel flow. This came out to a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.769, which is about dead on the money of what it should have been. Next up is my Ford Fairmont station wagon when it had the 6 liter and the twin 7875 turbos on it. Now I did this comparison on three different boost levels just because I, I was curious if the brake specific fuel consumption changed depending on how much boost you're running. So we ran the car at two and a half pounds of boost it only had 58% ethanol content. It made 498 crankshaft horsepower, 372 pounds per hour of fuel, and that came out to a 0.74 brake specific fuel consumption. This is about dead on the money of what it should be for a turbocharged combo, but as you'll see at the higher boost levels, it starts to consume quite a bit of fuel. Next up is the Fairmont, but at 17 PSI boost. We increased the ethanol content a little bit. It was at 69%. It made 850 crankshaft horsepower, 768 pounds per hour of fuel flow, and that came out to a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.903. Now this is quite a bit higher than what it should be for a turbocharged combo. Next up is the Fairmont, but on 25 pounds of boost. We, we again increased the ethanol content. It was 71% ethanol. It made 1,101 crankshaft horsepower. 939 pounds per hour of fuel flow, which came out to a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.85. This is pretty much dead on the money of what it should be. Maybe just a tad high, but gives you a good idea. Next up, I wanted to see if a four valve engine maybe was more efficient. So we have the car that we most recently ran on the dyno, the Fairmont Futura with the Vortec 4200 and 7875. And I have two different boost levels for this car. We ran the car on 19 PSI. It made 627 crankshaft horsepower. With 82% ethanol content, it flowed 552 pounds per hour, and that came out to a 0.881 brake specific fuel consumption. Now what's interesting is this is 
basically right on par with the two valve engines. That theory there may not hold any weight. Next we ran the car at 26 PSI. <laughs> It made 711 crankshaft horsepower with 82% ethanol. It made 655 pounds per hour of fuel and brake specific fuel consumption came out to 0.921. So you can see that it's actually a little less efficient than the two valve engine, but who knows, there may be some variances there. Last example that I have for you guys today is my buddy Mikey McCracken. He has a twin turbo S10 that is running methanol, twin Gen 2 7875s. Now this car is running straight methanol. And based on the trap speed and vehicle weight, we can calculate that the car was making 797 crankshaft horsepower. From the day log, we got 1,571 pounds per hour of fuel flow. And from that, we're able to calculate the brake specific fuel consumption is 1.97. This is like dead on the money for a turbo methanol car. As we saw in all of the examples, I think almost all of them exceeded the brake specific fuel consumption that you saw in this table. These values I found on the internet, this is what people typically recommend, and I think it's pretty safe to say that all of them exceeded this, except for my Cobalt, which that's kind of a weird example. So if I were to make recommendations, I would say make sure you go on the high side of all of these numbers maybe even add a tenth to it just to be safe you know if you're sizing an injector it's better to buy one set of injectors instead of two because injectors are expensive and it's better to get them right the first time with that being said make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one